Welcome back to the Explore Family Garage. This is part two of the PX3 Ranger review. Uh, today we're gonna to do the internals of the car. Um, we're gonna keep it very short and sharp because we went through quite a fair bit last time around the outside and the engine specs and all those kind of things. So let's get started. Okay, so coming up to the driver's side, you'll see obviously keyless entry. So on the unlock and obviously on the lock. Um, Passenger side has it as well, nothing on the rear doors. Uh, so it's only the front that we have that functionality. So um, while we're on the, the driver's door, look, basic window controls, window lock, and also to just uh, just obviously to sort of deadlock or lock the car, obviously from the inside and unlock, of course. Uh, you've also got those same controls on the passenger side. Now the, um, obviously interior in this being the Ranger, um, in the Ford lineup is obviously the, at the highest spec. So a mix between, you know, leather man-made, leather textile equipment. Um, it runs obviously the wild track, uh, tra you know, trademark sort of orange with obviously all the orange stitching. Um, the dashboard also too does run, uh, obviously it's a leather wrap dash, obviously again with all the orange stitching. And you will see across onto the passenger side there where you get the orange sort of wild track marking on that infill panel. So coming back out, if we have a look here at the driver's seat to start with, um, electronic, obviously forward and back, up and down and tilt. And it does have a manual lumbar support on the inside. The passenger seat, however, only gets a mechanical slide forward and back and gets a manual tilt forward and back, up and down. Uh, doesn't get any electrics. So that's a, a difference between the two. However, Look with its sort of I guess its baseline height um, and lumbar setting because uh, it also doesn't have lumbar support. Uh, it is it is quite comfortable as it is there. So um, coming around and having a look, obviously at the I guess the driver's station, you can adjust the steering column just by releasing this friction lever here, uh, and you are able to get it to go up and down. Um, normal things here like bonnet release, etc. So. On here, we've got basically just our headlight control, so you can have it in automatic, or you can turn it on, parkers or full. Um, you do have your dimming for your dashboard, and you can adjust the headlights up or down um, in the way they obviously shine out onto the road. So um, through that switch there, you've got, and driving light control or fog lamp control. Um, electronic mirrors left and right, and automatic fold function for such. Um, internally here on the dash, we can see, look, it's quite a, I guess it's a, the, the dash itself gives you a fair bit of information. You can see over in the left-hand panel there, we've got temperature, we've got time. We've also got basically just a, a, a compass position. Um, you can run it just on your phone if you wanted to, or you can run it on entertainment. Uh, coming across onto the, um, the right-hand side, the, that's my default screen, so I see um, I see the taco or the RPM gauge obviously on the inside, fuel gauge. Then I see the car pictured between the lane keeping assist lanes, that which obviously change color from, from red to green, etc. and a digital speedo. You'll also see that we're you know, showing 229K still empty and the, and the main odometer reading on the bottom. On this particular one though, if we have a look at the trip computer, which I did allude to this in the, in the first video, but you can see there over Look, the better part of 600 k's with a quarter of a tank to go we've been averaging 8.9 liters per hundred so that's not too bad at all in my opinion so coming into the center or sort of lower console here we can see four-wheel drive control so we've got two high four high four low uh, we've got the red arc tow pro elite controller obviously mounted nicely also down there automatic start stop we've got you know diff locks We've got downhill ascent, traction control, parking sensors, um, standard gear lever, park reverse, neutral drive and sport. And you've also got plus and minus control for any manual shifting or manual holding in gears on the actual control lever itself. So what we might do is we might duck around uh, the other side. Actually, before we do that, we'll just have a quick look at the steering wheel here. So cruise control settings um, or controls are on the right hand side of the steering wheel. Pre self-explanatory but um, on off distronic control so you can obviously control the distance to which you want to maintain from the car in front closer or further away um, obviously set and reset and on the left hand side here we've got volume control uh, 
voice activation function and um, obviously control for your phone, hang up, answer, etc. So let's duck around to the passenger side. Okay, so here we are on the passenger side. Just quickly on the door as we go through, electronic button for the window and again, lock control, which is all pretty standard. You will see that it doesn't have the electronic control as mentioned, so you've only got the manual, the manual uh, release here for the adjustability of the, of the tilt and also to the mechanical arm down there. Um, if we cut, use this side, because there's a little bit more access on this side, to come in and have a look at the control center in the, in the center of the dash, Look, again, nothing out of control here. It's not by far the, you know, the largest display or the most proficient from a features or functionality point of view, but it does give you everything. So radio control, climate control, you can see you've got dual zone climate control in this car, um, which can be controlled from up here on the dash or can also be controlled from down here using your, obviously, you know, hotter, colder settings, fan settings, automatic air conditioning, blah, blah, blah. Um, phone. Um, again, Bluetooth phone, all pretty, pretty easy. Uh, does run Apple CarPlay. Navigation, um, which is, look, it's pretty sound, to be honest with you, nav, the nav system. It's got most of the updated, you know, estates and things like that, and I haven't really used it off-road to see how much uh, mapping there is available for that. But definitely for everything that we've had to use it for, it has been, it's been pretty spot on, to be honest. So, coming down here, 12 volt socket, USB port down there illuminated and we've also got another USB charger here uh, Heated seats in the front row for the for the wild track and um, which is a, another nice little feature um, But other than that, that's pretty much uh, the car in a nutshell. Just again normal sort of courtesy lights, you know um, Glasses holders, etc. The mic for the uh, for the phone is up the top on the roof there, which is a really good spot there You can see the controls for that for the voice activation and the phone right near the driver So it does run a very good Bluetooth system, um, which is which is really really good So um, what we might do now is we might uh, duck around. Well, actually while we're here Let's just have a look down here. So excuse me a little bit dirty at the moment, but these are the Ford Ranger proper drop-in rubber mats now as you can see obviously using it up the river out in the bush, that they are really good. They're nice deep dish and they definitely protect, obviously we look at the carpet under there, I haven't cleaned that. That's just basically how that's been kept there. So um, yeah, no, they're a really good thing and highly recommended, especially in the back with the kids. But um, while we're talking back and kids, let's, uh, let's jump across to that point now. Okay, so here we are at the back. So again, window control in the rear, the same on the other side over there. Um, as you can see, we've got one car seat still in the car and Bailey, our seven year old, she obviously is not in a car seat at the moment. So this passenger seat's probably a little bit further back than where Kate would normally have it, but that is my driving position there, uh, obviously, and that's the true distance between Blake and uh, my seat. It looks tight. There is actually more room there even when you see him in there than, than what it looks. Uh, and it's definitely more than comfortable, I think, especially when they come out of those seats, obviously down onto the main, uh, the main seat and are able to sit back a little bit further. There is actually more room back in here than what you realize. And in the Ford, the backrest is laying back at a, at a reasonable enough rate, obviously, for it to be quite comfortable. That's one difference with the Hilux. The Hilux was a, a pig of a thing for comfort in the back. Um, the Hilux probably had a little bit more foot room, whereas in the Ranger, as you can see, your tail shaft, um, obviously, uh, hoop is running through, obviously, internally into the floor, whereas in the Hilux, if I remember correctly, it was a flat floor running through there. But that would only really concern those with potentially, you know, three kids or that were re or someone that was regularly having three people in the car. So um, down in here. There's enough, my kids have all got bloody iPads and stuff nowadays, so there's a, enough, obviously, 12 volt socket, and you can also two plug in a 240 volt power point here, um, which obviously is a, a 150 watt outlet, uh, obviously AC from the car. So again, you can run a, a, a 240 volt dual USB output um, plug in there, and, or adapter, and that way then you can have both kids running off a reasonable amount of charge coming out of um, that socket versus out of the 12 volt socket, so um, which will keep them quiet for longer, which is good. One thing to point out in the back here is there, while we're down here, sorry, I'll come back in, sorry, in and out. No air vents in the back console for the rear row. 
No air vents up on the roof there for the rear row. There is no air supply to the rear row in the Ranger at all. Um, the rear row relies on the air to come from those two vents right there. Something to be mindful of. Um, look, we adjust those two to point back through here on hot and or cold days, which keep the kids happy. But to my point in the earlier video in the part one, that's where these come into their own. Being able to allow the kids to open up the window, rain, hail or shine, and get some good fresh air in uh, is, is key. So highly recommend the weather shields on the car for that reason, based on the lack of air coming through the back. But again, you'll see we've got the big rubber mat through here. The Ford rubber mat is good because it doubles over itself, obviously going across the back here. So it's rubber all the way through there. So. Um, which is really good because the kids, look, I'm sure all kids are like it. They are pretty rough on the uh, rough on the gear in the back, especially just jumping in and out. So it's got, look, the, the driving aids that the car's got from whether it be Distronic Cruise Control to Lane Keeping Assist to Auto High Beam Dim to Hill Descent Control, um, Traction Control. It's a, an ANCAP five-star rating with six airbags. So definitely keep in mind, obviously, those kind of things, especially for... Uh, for, for the rear row, I know when I was looking, the Amarok didn't run any airbags in the rear, which is a deal breaker for us. Um, so there's a, there's a, a lot of stuff that you need to make sure you do your homework on. But, I, but in concluding part two of the PX3 Ranger review, I hope that that has given you enough information between those two videos. Though if you do have any further questions, feel free to drop us a, uh, uh, drop us a, a comment in the bottom uh, and reach out and we're, we're more than happy to, uh, to answer them. So thanks once again for watching and we'll see you again next time. Cheers.